There we go. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome on in. Yes, welcome to episode 19, see, I remember Dev, of Into the Geekdom podcast. And uh, we are joined by a friend of ours that we've known for, like I think, almost a year now. Hey, Lofi. Hello, I'm Major Loaf. Yeah, yeah, think, Major Loaf on. I think it has been like about that long now. Yeah, because I was like, hmm, when did I meet Sally? <clears throat> that was about around that time. Yeah, all right. It's weird wow. to think it's been that long. <laughs> I know. Well, I'll be how... coming up on two years of streaming in like October or something like that. Nice. So that's so, so you what, what got you started doing it? Was it like was it the pandemic then? Because it's been two years or? Well, it was. I, I can't really remember exactly what it was, but I was playing Xbox, uh, Xbox One, and like a lot of Destiny with my friends. And Mixer was like integrated into the Xbox oh, like, yeah. OS platform. Yeah. And so you could just super easily just go live. And I was like, I may as well. So I started streaming for like a month or two on Mixer. And then Mixer got shut down. <laughs> right as <laughs> I was like, like oh. as I was starting to gain momentum, Mixer got shut down. So I was like, oh, okay. But I had also just bought a PC, um, and so like that. I think in like January or December, I was like streaming to Twitch from my console, and then made the switch to streaming from PC in January of la last year. God, okay. I can't even remember now. So, <laughs> streamed from console for a, a little while, and then started from PC in like a January of last year, I think. Oh, nice. Yeah, I, I'm probably still gonna be doing on PlayStation for a while because I just don't have the connection. The proper I was gonna say you don't have the play. internet. It barely runs on PlayStation right now, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it's gotten worse. I don't know what's going on, but uh, Yeti. Nebby and myself are hoping to get a, a house together. And oh, get, that's like, right. Yeah, the streaming house, which would be great. Yep. If I'm in town, it'll be a lot better than out here. And we once they probably get like LLC internet and give them like it get yeah. like the business class internet. Yep. Oh yeah, we're gonna get the best we can. For and sure. once yeah. once they do that, I'm gonna take a vacation. Yeah, <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna have Dev live with us. Hell yeah! I'm even gonna Big bring my bunny ears. ears. Nice. <laughs> we should do a cooking stream with Dev in the kitchen with us. Okay, let's go. <laughs> I will. Wait. I will break I'll my watch. anonymity. Because you, you'll be the food tester. I'll, I'll do. Actually, no. What I'll do is I'll just get a Rey Mysterio mask where I can <laughs> still eat. A, the funny mask. There we go. Just, just do what like Swagger Souls does, and just always wear a bandana and a hood. <laughs> just look really suspicious on camera. Yeah. All the time. Sometimes he just straight up wears like a balaclava just on camera. It just looks super sus all the time. <laughs> hey, I am I am a VTuber. Anonymity is my game. Exactly. You didn't start off like that though. People, some people already know what you look like, Dev. Shut up. Nobody <laughs> knows what I look like. Wa ha ha ha. That's so, why I could never make the transfer into V. I like wanted yeah. to do VTubing, but like everybody already knows what my face looks like. So it's like, what? Well, was, point? All right. So. Here's the thing. With me, part of why I switched over to VTubing was, like Mike said, yes, I used to have a face cam. Well, I mean, I still technically have the face cam. It's still there. Yeah. But <laughs> it's. I'm not happy with how I look. Mm -hmm. So sitting there for two, three hours at a time seeing my face in the corner of the screen was just kind of like <sighs> I definitely understand so... yeah I, I get it I get it and then I met First Penlock thing. and saw like wait a second anonymity and not having to look at my ugly mug oh, and it's God. still expressive yes it's true. The VTubing thing, at least you're able to be expressive and not worry about. Yes. Some of the rigs I've seen people have are just. Nutty. I mean, I mean, so yeah. Cool. I mean, Lofi. Look. Sad money. <laughs> Sad money. I love it. We had Death Plumes on last time, and I'm like, damn, I've never like been attracted to a VTuber before. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Mike. Wow. I follow what? a couple that I'm definitely like, those are. <laughs> oh no! Yeah. There's, there's. Oh, trust me, there's plenty of them out there. 
both male mm-hmm. and female ones that I'm just yep. like. That's gonna slowly introduce me to all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I mean, speak. I mean, introduce me to all the cute VTubers, please. I mean, yeah, Mike. I've got a couple more that we that I could line up for uh, the show. Well, you know, we do have July coming up, so yeah. yeah. I mean, granted, I know that you have a few flesh tubers lined like, up too. Uh, uh, we would we would have Boss on, but now she's waiting for her baby to come. Yeah. So that's fair enough. Um. So Lofi, how did you come up with the name Major Loaf for yourself? So, are you just like a bread fan? <laughs> well, it is tangentially related to bread. I used to work <laughs> at a coffee shop that also did bagels. And um, I kind of have to rewind a little bit. I got into gaming like on next, or I guess they're last gen consoles now, super late. I was playing on like a GameCube for forever. And I didn't get an Xbox One until like seven years into the life cycle. So I never had like any game gamer tags or anything that I was att- attached to because I never played games online. I never had accounts for anything. It was all like single player stuff or like flash games on the internet. So I was like trying to come up with a gamer tag for forever, something that was good. And my best friend who like I followed to two separate jobs and still hang out with all the time uh his gamer tag is private donut so we were kind of thinking like okay we should stick with like the theme of private Baker's. donut and major loaf i love it oh, exactly i well, love it so my friend i love it what ended up <laughs> like what ended up giving me the idea was we had like we would get these big boxes of just like frozen pre-shaped raw bagels <laughs> in and the company that sent that supplied us them was called loaf master Oh, and perfect. so I just swapped it and switched out master for major to stick with the military thing of major and private and then donut and loaf. So, yeah, no. it's because I worked for it forever with my best friend. And, hold on, <laughs> and a second. No, hold on now. my question is, how'd you end up with a higher rank than him? <laughs> <laughs> it just worked out that way. His it's is just... originally... His is private donut. It's a old uh, red versus blue. I was gonna reference. say it's red versus so, blue reference. Yeah, oh. yeah. Oof. Franklin Delano <laughs> Donut. Yep. Oh my god. FDD. FDD. I'm from Iowa. Nobody cares. <laughs> oh man, I haven't watched Red versus Blue so <laughs> long. Classic RVB, so good. I know. Uh, that's good that Major Loaf is like basically like a degree of that. <laughs> That's yeah, <laughs> it's tangentially related to red versus blue. But do you have a favorite kind of bread? Like, is it is it bagels then? No, <laughs> definitely not bagels. <laughs> uh, bagels are okay, but I, I mean, if I'm gonna go with like a good kind of bread, like look like I like like a good like sweet bread, like Hawaiian bread, or okay. that's interesting. Okay, or like uh, like sourdough. You can't go wrong with sourdough. Oh, he said sourdough canceled. <laughs> wow! Why sourdough? Oh no, no I, I just don't like sourdough. <laughs> it's so good though. What kind of Italian are you, dude? It's a classic Italian bread. Sourdough is just a classic everywhere. Scally bro. bread, man. There's places now. If you wanted to go for like, in Italy, if you want to go with like hundred years, good Italian bread, go like focaccia or something. Exactly, oh, yeah. exactly. The oil and the herbs. Yep. Exactly. Basically fried in fried in olive oil yeah yes like, you can't uh, go wrong exactly that. red peppers yo yep. yep. <laughs> dude that like you're basically you're basically oh. talking about my sunday afternoon growing up <laughs> <laughs> like i'm pretty sure that we had every sunday there was at least five loaves of that sh- stuff <laughs> in the house and it was gone before anybody left oh man i grew up it- in the south so it was just like Fried chicken, comfort food, mac oh, and cheese, shit. stuff like that. Oh. So, I'm glad we can have food talk. What's up, Yuri? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I tried focaccia for the first time. It was like I did like a 12 hour one, like I left it overnight to proof. Mm. So it was like super fluffy. And then I did like roasted garlic and rosemary. Oh. And nice. It was so good. You're speaking nice. to my soul. And I got to do it again, especially when Dev comes up. Yes! We for the stream. We should just proof a focaccia. Fuck yes, Hell let's yeah. go. Just make one like from, pizza. from scratch. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Dev's like super excited. <laughs> I'm fucking drooling over here. 
if you want to have something that's like like that but in pizza form the detroit style pizza is okay. basically what is basically focaccia as pizza yeah eat, it's, eat, that'd be fucking it's, drilling oh, over here it's so good it's it's everyone in in america was like oh new york style oh chicago style i'm like no detroit and new haven style pizza is really where it's What's at what's a if you new want. haven pizza it's, it's new haven connecticut there's this old there's this place in connecticut called peppy's it's been there for like i don't know since like 1911 or 1914 a long time and they've been cooking out of the same brick (laughs) oven and it's like there's like two locations and it's like they do it their way and it's Mm. like this thin crust and it's i i haven't found a pizza as good as that since then (laughs) oh man that sounds so good i gotta go to new haven (laughs) it's not even that far honestly just you know probably eight hours <laughs> about how far it used to be for me now it's a lot yeah. farther <laughs> yeah how did you uh so how did you meet sally then streaming i know you've known her from streaming we met we met through twitch yeah twitch. i was nice. i had just started uh i had just started streaming on pc i had only been on pc for a couple weeks if that and was looking for games that I wanted to play on PC and hadn't really made the move into FPSs on PC aside from Destiny yet. And I was still getting used to playing on mouse and keyboard. So I was like, I need to play something that's not, doesn't take reflexes or skills. So I was like, I'm gonna play Spore because that's a game that I love. I love that game. I used to play it all the time and I was like, it's gotta be on Steam and it was. And nice. I guess apparent, and I was just playing it. I was like a good, I was, you know part of the way through my campaign and she i guess was looking for uh, randomly decided to look up people who were playing spore and i happened to be like the only one of the very few who was and she just hung out in my chat and we've just been talking ever since that's good that's great because like yeah i think it was uh you two when i when we when yeti and i met met you guys we're like oh these guys are really cool and we really uh, like (laughs) Every game we played with you guys, it was like, oh, we found other people like us. They're just as degenerate. <laughs> yep. yep. And now Sally and I live together. So. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I have my current relationship because of Twitch. It's crazy. I yeah, never thought true. I'd be able to say something like that. But, like, I've met, met, like, all of my current friends and my current partner, basically, because of Twitch. Hey, nothing That's, wrong with that. That is, that is really crazy, but it's really cool. Yeah. That that that's that stuff that's that people under don't understand mm-hmm. sometimes about being online is that sometimes you can make something pretty good for yourself on it and still have yeah. a real life. <laughs> yeah, I I definitely like I've always made friends through the internet. Like I used to play like Minecraft like forever ago. I started playing that in the beta, so I was like playing on servers and stuff as soon as you could. And so like mm-hmm. that was how I was making friends when I was like 13, 14 was just playing on random servers oh man i remember that i I used to be a big cod player in high school nice old school cod player nice i i got to (laughs) pick odd like a handful of times growing up but i was my mom wouldn't let me have violent games so (laughs) it wasn't until i could afford to buy video games myself could i start getting the fun stuff I was, uh, okay, three, like, two, at that time, this was, just, was like 15, 16 years ago, I was probably more of like into athletics, so I didn't play a lot of games. I grew yeah. up with a bunch, but then there was a time period in my teens where I just didn't care about playing as much, so I just didn't play a lot. Yeah, I, I as a kid, like I, like I said, I got that GameCube when I was like five, so I've had that thing for forever, and so like, so that's I was playing. early memory is GameCube? Kind of. <laughs> oh, all these you're not far off. all these babies we keep bringing on uh, you're not far off but yeah so like i never i was always playing racing games and then yeah same way when i was in my teenager years i didn't play as much and then i bought my friend's xbox and i was like i'm never going outside again <laughs> and here we are to this day yep. you go outside for the first time and burn <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I haven't been outside in like four days and immediately started burning. <laughs> I had to spray all the way down with sunscreen and stuff so I wouldn't come in here and look like a lobster. <laughs> that's, that's fair enough. <laughs> um, so what was, the, what was the first game you were introduced to on GameCube then? 
That's hard to say because I think like when I got it, it was like a Christmas present. So I think I got like a couple games at the same time. So, I mean, I remember playing like the Finding Nemo game on the Dawn. GameCube. And I think that game was off. I even remember being a little kid and being like, this game sucks. Uh, <laughs> there, was, there was a Polar Express game that I also played a little bit. And I also oh remember God. thinking that game sucked too. But I played Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2 constantly as a kid. And That's pretty good. Okay. I still enjoy racing games and that game in particular. I remember on GameCube, uh, I actually really had fun with Shrek 2. For whatever reason nice and there's super mario sunshine that was really good on there but the yeah one that, the one i remember the most was like wwe armageddon oh gosh <laughs> yeah and it was so good i had a i had smash brothers melee and i also had legend of zelda but it wasn't until oh, i got yeah, a, got older that i started playing melee a lot but i'm terrible at the new melees like oh, i I've play so, on this so i play on the switch with sally and jack sometimes and i am dog shit at yeah, that I'm game. Awful. I'm like, when, am I gonna get, when have I been so bad at this game? I don't... Yeah. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. when did I get so bad at Smash? Like, what the fuck happened? Your, your reflexes, you let wander. I guess, Maybe. but I mean, I, I can know. play an FPS okay. It's just, I can't, yeah, get the, like, uh, I can't get the combos down, man. That's just, I can pick up any shooting game. <laughs> pretty much see, i can pick up any shooting game and be okay see but, man, i'm the opposite games. i'm the opposite like you you give me a first person shooter and i'm like uh, uh, uh. <laughs> you, you give me a fighting game like smash ultimate or tekken and i'm just like bop, 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 bop. <laughs> that's why i like playing with uh with emma and nebby because they like fps's but yeah, I need to get I need to get back into the Destiny grind. I've been playing the hell out of Apex lately and having a lot of fun with that. Is, uh, so what do you what do you what are you doing on stream mostly right now? Uh, I have not been streaming as much as I used to. In fact, if you go back and look through, it's like I've been streaming like maybe once every two to six weeks since like last <laughs> September or since like last July well, at least. Clearly, we gotta change it's, that. I started, well, I'm trying to, I'm kind of on a little bit of a break from school. I started last September, and that kind of took up every second of free time that I had. And I basically had to just, like, stop streaming. I mean, I, yeah. like, didn't have, I, I had, like, nothing left at the end of the week. Even, like, by the time, like, Saturday, Sunday rolled around, like, I'd sleep, like, all day Saturday. And then Sunday, I'd be like, it's already, like, 4 o'clock. I don't want to stream now. <laughs> so... I'm trying to get back into it now. I've streamed twice in the last like week or two, which is much more than I have in months. But lately, I've been uh, just mostly streaming Apex, I guess. Yeah. Okay. But I also do um, some indie games every now and again. I like the uh, game Dead Cells. I don't know if you guys are familiar. I've with that never one. heard of it. So it's a, if you like roguelikes, it's kind of like a Metroidvania roguelike. You have to get as far as you can. And if you die, you get sent all the way back to the beginning. There's like, Oof. there's like every level that you get to, it's like the same theme, but each dungeon and level that you get to is randomly generated, random rooms and like random enemy placements. And it's it's really hard. It's like a hack slasher, and you pick up weapons and upgrades along the way, but you can only hold two weapons in your hands and then two abilities, and that's Holy it. Crap. So that's if like you come. Too. <laughs> yeah, so if you if you're holding something that you really really like but you come up against a, or come up to another item that's like way higher level, you have to make the decision of like do I drop the one that I already have and take the chance yeah. of grabbing this other item and ruin the run? Let's see. And it's it's brutal, but it's really really fun. That'd be interesting to try, honestly. I like it a lot. I think it's I on Game play... Pass. Because I used to play a lot of Sierra games, and they're like that. Like, if you don't have that certain thing, you cannot finish the game. But you won't know until you get to that point. Yeah, there's. It's like there is even like the amount of runs that you do. You'll pick up like these uh, runes that let you do different things, like activate teleporters, open portals, portals, smash through the floor, um, activate vines so you can climb up higher. Uh, and if you don't have those runes, like there will be whole portions of that specific 
stage that you're at that you can't get to because you can't smash through the floor or you can't wall run yet and so it's like the more you play it and the more clears you get through like the the better the more stuff you can actually discover as you play the game more interesting yeah actually it doesn't sound and, like a bad game and, and no deb i forgot that part because i was busy but we'll ask him later yeah. <laughs> uh, uh-oh no, no, no. no, no nothing, nothing bad. We <laughs> we usually have the guests pick the raid target at the end of the show, so yeah. just something to think about when oh, we get okay. when we get to it. Cool, sounds good. Okay. Uh, but... so, so what like what would you say is your favorite like genre of games then, like personally? Oh, I feel like I've probably put the most hours overall into shooters um because like once i got my xbox i immediately went into like borderlands 2 and overwatch and was playing the hell out of those games um and then as soon as destiny 2 came out like i pretty much ditched borderlands and overwatch and played destiny 2 non-stop from launch up until like three months ago pretty much oh nice okay so probably shooters at this point shooters and racing games i think are the ones that like i'm best at but i think i play the most shooters now do you have, uh, do you have like an all-time favorite i still i probably still have to say like destiny 2 is like that game even though like i have such an a toxic unhealthy relationship with it of where like i, I mean... go back and forth I go back and forth being like, this is the worst game ever, and I hate it, and then, like, something will happen, <laughs> Lofi, and I can't, Lofi. I can't do anything but play it for six months straight, Lofi, and it's like... I literally think you just described, like, 99.99% yeah. of the people that play that game. I know, dude, I'm even, I didn't <laughs> plan games, this, honestly. but I'm even wearing a Destiny shirt today. <laughs> <didn't, I'm> like, <laughs> so, currently, he's still in love with Destiny. Okay. Currently, I'm still but, in love with so Destiny. We, we even though, even next week, maybe been, not. Even though I've been playing nothing but Apex for like <laughs> a month or two now. Well, yeah, Apex and Dead Cells. The heart ponder, you know. That is true. Yeah. There is a. We're in the middle of it. Destiny's in the middle of a new season right now, and I keep seeing content leaked, and I'm like, man, that looks like fun, but man, I don't want to grind up <laughs> again. <laughs> oh. I don't want to start the relationship all over again. Yeah. It's like Yuri with his TFT problem. Oh my god, no. We will not talk <laughs> about Yuri and his TFT. Uh, now we, he's in the TMNT, so that's fine. We li- <laughs> Yes, but literally, it was so bad that we would literally have to bribe him with subs. And yeah. we'd Let's literally see, just... Fortress? Yeah. Uh, or, no, Team Fight Tactics? Yeah. Oh, I don't know what that is. It's ridiculous really either, it, it's stupid it, but it that's kind of... i was gonna say that's just my opinion <laughs> <laughs> but like he would literally stop playing with us and then he's like all right i'm gonna go play tft now we're like why why are you just leaving this game you can just keep <laughs> playing with us it's like my buddy in smite he's addicted to smite <laughs> i'll just play that game non-stop Is tons and tons of in the chat now <laughs> but yeah no like legitimately it would be like all right yuri if you can <laughs> if you can go until midnight Sunday, we will give you this many subs. <laughs> Without playing TFT. Without playing TFT. That literally does sound like an addiction problem, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna bribe you to not do this. Yeah. You're gonna need to do an intervention on TFT. <laughs> you know what? It actually reminds me of this one time when I was working in when I was a park ranger, we had this one kid, he was he would just drink almost like a case of pop within a couple days. So one time, and he focused on that for whatever reason than actually working. So one time I stole one, and I was like, "I have your very last, I have your very last Pepsi. And if you work hard with me today, I'll give it back to you." He's like, well, "Why'd you take it?" I'm like, "Cause I'm working with you by myself today, and I want your ass to work. And if you do it, you get your Pepsi, and no problems, no problems for me. I mean, we both look good." <laughs> otherwise i'm gonna pour it on the ground i've never seen the kid work so hard in my life <laughs> <laughs> he obviously had a pepsi problem so i'm like 
Alright, well, I'm just feeding his addiction at this point, but... That's like bribing food the... service workers with cigarettes, basically. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many of them, it's true. It's like, oh. if, you, if you have a good service tonight, you can go have a smoke break halfway through. <laughs> if you go, if you have a good service tonight, I'll buy you a carton. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good deal for most of the service workers I used to work with. We'll go drive to the Navy <laughs> Reserve and we'll get you a whole case. Yep. <laughs> go drive up to New Hampshire. No taxes. <laughs> Is there taxes in New Hampshire? On certain things, yeah. Oh, damn. I wish that was the case here. We only have butt taxes here. Dude. Dude, we <laughs> live. You, we have like every we have every like tax imaginable basically. Dude, you're talking to somebody who lives in a state that's nicknamed Taxachusetts. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Like, lo I like lo Loafy Hearn is like ah uh, yeah. I, know, I, know. I love. I do like. I like. Well, okay. I've been to Salem and Boston and loved the hell out of both of those places. Let so me know I, next I time know. you're gonna be up this way. Uh, we'll, it's gonna be. We'll wild. hang out, bro. <laughs> it's gonna be. I, wild. I used to be. I used to live. I, I moved from North Carolina out to like the Midwest now. So I used to be Quite way, different. way closer yeah. to like all well, that uh, to New England. I'll but see. Not so much anymore. Lofi, see you, Sally, Jack, hop on a plane, come stay, the, on, week, stay on the week, stay the weekend. <laughs> I'll show you, I'll show you Boston properly. Hell yeah! Or you guys could hang out in like the old part of Salem where all the witch trials used to happen. Hell yeah, we can do that too. I mean, I'm only an hour yeah, from there. I went, a, I went on a, I went on a tri uh, like tour around Salem. Yep. The and. Uh, Man, the Salem witch trials are crazy. We could, I can sit and talk about. <laughs> okay, I don't know. It's probably it's been a little while since I like, I I loved like the spooky shit. <laughs> like it's been All so right. long since I like had that stuff on stream. But I used to, like I played horror games for a little bit. But I used like I'm super into true crime and the dark history of the u.s the witch trials all that kind of crazy stuff oh, man, the u.s is a lot of fucked up dark history <laughs> dude, <laughs> like so you're funny. telling me dude <laughs> <laughs> my, parents listen to, my parents listen to one that's just texas oh, and it's God. ridiculous yeah dude i used to the uh, last podcast on the left was one that i used to listen to like religiously and hell you want fucked up just google F florida man <laughs> Come up with that's more just like funny well, yeah some of them are pretty fucked up in a funny way, though. That is true. That is true. true. But yeah, no, forget. We're talking about uh, Massachusetts. Pretty much every year, for all every year of school. All right, time for the trip to Salem. All right, time for the trip to Plymouth. <laughs> Plymouth. Yeah, Plymouth and Salem. <sighs> Mom, like can me, I they... can I skip it this year? No, I don't want to. <laughs> no, you're going to school. I don't want to deal with you. For me growing up in North Carolina, it was either like Wilmington, going out to Wilmington, or Williamsburg in Virginia were like the two historical okay. the, hor the two yeah. historical locations that they would like take us to on like field trips. Or they would just take us around like where I grew up because there was enough stuff that had happened there. Uh. I, remember, I, I, I remember as a kid, we used to like go to Kingston because that used to be the old capital of Canada. And like the old, okay. like, two, like the old, like two hundred year old prison still there and everything. They just closed out like the last ten years and it's still sitting there. And they have like spooky tours and stuff like that. Nice. And they tell you all the different inmates that used to live there. Like some of the most notorious people used to live there, and they're like, "Oh shit." Nice. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. So I Kingston Penitentiary. Place. If like if you if, if if you guys ever run Ontario. Kingston Penitentiary. They have like a night walk, and you can get like a little spooky ghost story. So, so yeah. what I'm hearing is, we need to go ghost hunting. Well, I, I was gonna say, <laughs> I was gonna say, I know we know something that I'll be doing when I make my trip up there. Yeah, yeah, it's about now. It's about like almost two hours from me, so it's like That's four hours from Toronto. I'm fine. Let's go. <laughs> Deb's like, I'm going. I'm <laughs> you, going now. You, you can drive, bitch. <laughs> do you, uh, yeah, honestly I know, I know do, you, do you really yeah. want to do you really want the massachusetts boy driving in canada 
No. Probably not. You probably, you probably yell at everyone on the road. You do not yeah, yeah. You Off don't the want road. the Massachusetts boy driving anywhere, even Massachusetts. <laughs> not even Massachusetts. I mean, he's he's got a point. He's got a point. I may or may not I've been, have... <laughs> I've been around, Devlin. <laughs> I may or may not have almost gotten into a couple of accidents the other day just driving down uh, away from my house. Oh, God, I believe it. I kind of want to see a mass hole versus a Canadian redneck and see how that goes. <laughs> I got to say the worst drivers I've ever encountered and I've been to, I've driven like all up and down the East coast and like a whole bunch of States in the South. I got to say the worst drivers I've ever encountered were in DC, Washington, <laughs> DC. Like, Oh my God, they're a different breed. And like, I've been through Maryland's like, that seems like a New city where it's like, why bother driving? <laughs> Right? Exactly. I mean, like, I had to because I was road tripping there, and, like, once we were there, we just, like, walked or took electric scooters everywhere, but, like, just getting to the hotel was, like, the scariest hour of my life, and I've driven in, like, New York, New Jersey, I've driven in Atlanta, like, all these places that are, like, traditionally terrifying, and I was scared in D.C. <laughs> yeah, because, like, it's, it, it, cause it's still, like, in the maryland area too isn't there is like a virginia or... it's in it's technically part of virginia but it's right. its like own district I, it's yeah yeah it's, own it's not its own yeah but it's like it's a 500 a... person city but like it's not it's like it's its own thing yeah it's it's like its own it's like a district of the united states it doesn't yeah. count it's as like a city, like a state city. Within the states. yeah basically <laughs> it's really don't ask me how it works and i'm an, Amer like, I'm I'm an american and i grew up four hours from there and i still don't understand how the like how dc's and meanwhile every other country's viewed. like why can't you just have a regular city as your capital <laughs> <laughs> who knows <laughs> because we're not you <laughs> let people enjoy the things yeah i mean a lot of, i mean a lot of places are starting to do like one major city state in the middle of their country is like their main hub now so huh. it's starting to be more of a thing because it's, it's easier for trading basically yeah it's probably some tax thing <laughs> yeah it probably is plus dc's close up to the water where it's like they can control the whole seaboard that way yeah i don't know also it's just know. where like that's just where like the u.s just started basically <laughs> yeah they're just like we're gonna go what's here. up there we were like we'll just stay here we'll just put yeah. it in. we'll just put everything important here because we started here <laughs> I, I have I have a vague amount of American history because we don't really teach it, but it's like optional. To oh, us, what they don't treat teach American history in Canada? They yeah, have an optional. Wow. They, do, they do have an optional. They do have an optional in high school. Can you can you imagine yeah. that not learning about America? Oh, I mean, in a lot of Americans America. don't know that either. <laughs> I was gonna say. Uh, we're not even. I don't even want to get into the. Past. I I used to, I used to, I I was seeing this <laughs> educational girl I was like, system. There was this one girl, I, I think she was from Nebraska, she said, and I was at camp with her, and I was kind of seeing her, and it wasn't because of her intelligence, that's for sure, and she was, like, she thought New England was its own state, and I was like, no, I'm pretty sure it's, like, the 13 colonies that first settled the U.S. She's like, how would you know that? I'm like, I don't know, I went to school, I don't, <laughs> New England it's, is, uh, like, I, th it's, like, Massachusetts, <sighs> New York, Yeah, it's, it's, like, those little states, it's everything, like, south of maine and yeah like, legitimately maine, yeah. like legitimately it's it doesn't even include maine yeah it's literally yeah. like that little chunk excluding maine and just <laughs> pennsylvania i was like, like i was like that's why the patriots new are england. called new england patriots because they're like they're <laughs> supposed to be representing all of massachusetts basically by calling themselves new england yep, yep. The whole shebang. It wasn't like it's not its own state. Like it's not. It's not a real state. It's just a region. It's like yeah. when you say like the South. It's like New England, <laughs> the South, the Southwest, like that kind yeah, of. Yeah, it's deal. like when we divide our things up and like ours is like ours. A lot of ours are based off like English ones, like Northumberland and stuff like that. Like a lot of ours are from English terminologies and English districts. Yeah. <laughs> we still what? got a lot of that around here. No, like, like I'm just I'm laughing at. How we somehow went from, you know, Destiny Two to yeah. <laughs> England and Boston, oh, and that's that's how it works. You know? I love it. I love I it. Go, I, I can go into details how this girl is if you want. Oh my god! Only if we're talking about her dimensions. 
Um, <laughs> well, let's just say Nebraskans are definitely cornbread girls. <laughs> God, I, that phrase kills me. <laughs> <laughs> she currently lives in Arizona. I pull over on Instagram. Uh, I mean, Mike, if you want, I could always go see if Death Blooms is around. I'll just go to Mauritius myself. It's fine. <laughs> I, I've, I've been to North Africa. I'm sure I can handle East Africa. Uh, <laughs> it's a bit different, I'm sure. <laughs> it's an island in the middle of fucking nowhere, but... Oh, my God. I'll go to Mauritius. She'll take care of me. In more ways <laughs> than one, I'm sure. <laughs> so... <laughs> so when you when you play horror games like what like what horror games are you usually like like playing uh it's been a really really long time since i played like anything spooky on stream i used to, i think i played faz for a little while up until about a year ago and then that was about the time i started taking my break i was getting into faz um i really liked dead by daylight was a lot of fun i played that a little bit with some collab like, when huh <laughs> Fa when. Phasmo, Dead by Daylight collab when? I mean, I just gotta be asked. <laughs> See, I'm... But, um, all of Dev's people play Dead by Daylight. <laughs> Most of Dev's yeah. people play Dead by Daylight. I haven't played it in a long time. I'm probably really bad at it. But, like, I had, um... I had someone who used to be in my community who, like, begged me for forever to play, uh... Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator. Oh, God. And, like, <laughs> So, I really like the ghost hunting games, and I like Dead by Daylight, but I don't like jump scary games, like, at no. all. No, because they're not really scary, they're just annoying. No, it does, it does legitimately scare me. I just really hate jump scares. Like, I just, oh, I think okay. they're cheap, and I would much prefer yeah. to have, like, a scary-ass environment that keeps me on edge all time than being on edge because I think something's gonna pop up in my face. Like, kind of like how... Like Resident Evil does it, where you're like, it's tension the whole time, the and obvious. then like, yeah, and then like a monster will break through the I wall it, and yeah, attack yeah. you. Like that's different than just like a jump scare, right? Because you're in the wrong direction and something popped out of a yeah. Pan. Like with Resident like, Evil, you're expecting it, and it's already yeah. like it's, it's the psychological that makes it actually scary. Jump scares are not like technically scary; they're just like a yeah, quick throw, like, oh, yeah. Okay. And then or like in like Dead by Daylight, like you're playing with your friends. So like it scares the shit out of you when like the 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 bad guy comes out, but also you're at the same at the same time you know you're running from your friend. So it's like it's kind of just like really fucking fun tag. Yeah. Basically at that point, and it's like still scary because you know they're gonna kill you if you screw up. But like it's a much better time. Uh, have you actually seen the newest killer? In Dead by Daylight. Yeah. Isn't it like some crazy ass homunculus? It, it's essentially like, supposed to be the boogeyman. Yeah, and literally, some he can travel Cronenberg through Cronenberg nightmare. He can literally, <laughs> literally, he can freaking travel through the lockers to the point that they put locks on the lockers. <laughs> and Fuck. his power is that he basically makes it completely pitch black for like most of the map. Like, you can only see oh, so far shit. in front of you. And you'll just be running, that, and then... That, that ambiance would be scary. And then you, you're just that. running, and randomly it's like he's right there in front of you, and it's like, oh, crap. Jinx, thank you for that. the bits. Actually, as a matter of fact... <laughs> Jinx is one of the people there. Jinx is one of the people that plays Dead by Daylight with me, and she's actually live right now playing. Of course, you always have your friend Nightmare Princess, which also oh, plays. Wait, hold on. I yes. Yeah, the dredge. I've seen this thing. <clears throat> yep, yep, yep. The dredge. Yeah, it's a big old fucked up Cronenberg looking thing. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We've, we, I've honestly, Ooh. I've come to the point of calling him, uh, the dredgeusy. Because if you actually, if you look at him, like, it, look at his face. It looks. Like... R slash don't put your dick in there. <laughs> yeah. Have you guys seen uh, the trailer for the new game Scorn that's coming out on Game Pass no. No. later this year? 
Okay, so Scorn was like this project that got teased in like 2017 originally. They released like a very small demo and a little trailer. And then like the project went silent up until like the GCX event that they just had a few weeks ago. And they were like, it's coming out on Game Pass at the end of the year. And like they released a full length trailer. And if you're familiar with like Alien, like imagine the ambiance of like alien the inside of the ships where it's like looks all organic and like bones and stuff but that's the whole game is like that oh jeez and so like all your <laughs> weapons are like all these like living things that you like rip out of the ground and attach to your arm and like there's all this crazy <laughs> stuff nice. it's like very very doom very alien very hr giger and i'm super yeah. excited i'm definitely that gonna be playing it on cool. that sounds pretty out. badass I'm very it excited like, for it. It sounds like Ash from Evil Dead decided to be an actual horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> like, pick up I, things and, kind of. Yeah. <clears throat> it's like, it's, it's like, that's something he would do. Like, attach it to his arm. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like everything's like growing. Like, you're in like this dungeon that's that looks like it's like so grown. Strange. It's crazy. I'll have to look up the trailer. I can't wait to play it. It's going to be great. It, it sounds interesting. I don't know. I, I, I'd probably try that one. I don't play a lot of horror because it's just I don't find them scary to me at all. <laughs> yeah, we won't. But, but, but it's like you said, it's the it's like it's it has to be like an ambience thing. Like I rather be like psychologically scared. Than, Mike, like, we 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 won't talk about people playing horror games and not being scared. Yeah, like when, <laughs> when people like you and I play Fazdo and just make fun of people and then we just tease the ghost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll definitely scream when the ghost comes running after me, but I'm having a great time while it's happening. <laughs> I, I played I played once with two people, and I couldn't play them anymore because they told me I wasn't taking it seriously enough. And I what? just kept dying because I was like, <laughs> I wouldn't help them. I would just get the ghost to come out, get someone killed, and then run off well, like an asshole. That... Isn't that how you get it though? Yeah, like, yeah, you exactly. Gotta go you gotta get the ghost to come out. You gotta get the pictures, <laughs> yeah. and you gotta get the salt prints, and you gotta get them to blow out the candle. Yeah, I was like, stuff. I was like, get me, bitch, and I would throw shit at him. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, yeah, exactly. That's how you do it. Exactly. Like, that's how you ghost hunt. Water. That's you exactly you how pull, you do it. You gotta Someone pull the to Zach Baggins. You gotta pull the Zach Baggins and be like, hey, ghost, <laughs> you wanna come touch this ass? Come get me. Or like when uh, when uh, Gaming Devil and Dev do it with Penlock, they just summon it through a book and then make Penlock really scared. <laughs> <laughs> and then Dev and Gaming Devil are just doing roulette with a freaking prayer book. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, sir. <laughs> that was a great moment. Like, oh, man, like, the crucifix no. only has two arms left. Uh, oh, now it's one. We're <laughs> well, we're dead. And then it would get Pen instead of Dev. I don't I don't know what you're talking about, sir. <laughs> nope, not a clue. That's that's how Dev and I would play horror games. It's just completely ridiculous. <laughs> not at all not at all scared of it. We're just playing with the ghosts. Nah, yeah. that's a great that's way to do it. Time. That's a great way to do it. Yeah. Best way Especially to do it. Phasma. Someone has to die in Phasma, that's how it works. Exactly. It's usually me. Yeah, I, was, I, I I think I'm only at like level. I too I died too much to get points. So yeah, I die a lot in that game. I it took me forever to figure out how to like get to the lockers in time, and I still will die like halfway there. <laughs> we won't talk about me and Phasmo because I may or may not have glitched the game a couple of times and have over a hundred k in in oh, money. Oh yeah, he's like a rich ghost hunter in that game. I am Ow. hello. I am rich in most games. Okay, like I don't know if that's or not. like here, legit. I am sitting at almost twenty million bells in Animal Crossing. Oh my god! What the hell? You're the richest person on the island by like tenfold. You're like me when I play Forza Horizon. I'll just like randomly look at my credit counts. Like, oh, I've got four million credits. I can go buy whatever car I want. Yeah, that's like. That's like me and Skyrim, where I can just pay off the guards after doing a lot of heinous shit. I'll just give you a thousand coin, it's fine, I got a million of them. Yep, yeah, no. If you, kill the, if you kill the guards, there's no one to come after you for your crime. Yeah, but that's not as fun. It's when the it, chase. When, <laughs> it, when it comes to video games, I figure out real quick how to make money in them. Yeah, 
I try to do that too. Like Stardew, I probably have way too much in some of them, some some of my maps. Oh, pl yeah, no, we, we won't talk about Stardew. Because De Dev and I made a lot of it really quick. We fucked up though, because we we got too ahead of ourselves. <laughs> we were trying we were trying to complete it in one year, and we fucked up and forgot one thing because we got way too ahead of ourselves. And we're like, oh, well now we can't finish it in one year now. We should probably go back and do redo that now. We should try doing that. Yeah, we'd... we we start from a new one maybe. What is, what is your next day off? Uh, tomorrow. Bet. Let's do it. Apparently we're playing Stardew tomorrow. Let's go. Fuck yeah. Anyways. <laughs> hey, Lofi. Yeah. <laughs> Lofi's here. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, you're going to school then too, right? That's why you have like less time than you used to. I am, I'm currently on break right now, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to school right now. Good. School study? is important. I am currently going for uh, game. Well, I'm going to be a technically a full stack web developer, with a focus okay. in uh, AR and VR. So I'm going to be learning how to develop. Uh, actually, kind of what Dev Devlin's got going on with the VTuber avatar, um, hey, oh, but just like game go. development. And working in 3D environments, so they had you me know, working. You know, I know somebody a... that might use that one day. It's I fun. Do. They had me doing a bunch of stuff in Unity. I was learning. I mean, recently I was starting to get into Unity, but up until like a month or two ago, I was just going through like their foundations of everything. So I was learning like C, JavaScript, Python. Um, we built like a clone of a website at one point as a project. Uh, nice. One of, at one point, my partner and uh, or one of my classmates and I built like a prototype of a Twitch bot, which was really fun. Yeah. Um, it was Twitch is a really really hard like service to work with. <laughs> like uh, they don't let they don't let you get at a lot of things. No. Uh, so. That was a really interesting challenge was building that Twitch bot. But um, recently I was getting into C Sharp, which is more what Unity uses. Uh, when you write scripts for things in Unity, you write them in C Sharp. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, I was just getting into like, I had that, like my last project before I went on break was like, you know, make a ball turn it into an asset now add a floor now add a rigid body to the ball turn on gravity or and then like watch it bounce now add bounce to, or watch it hit the floor and not bounce now you can add bounce and so like i was getting used to all that stuff so right before break basically what you're saying is you were playing with balls yep i was oh, yeah. playing playing with balls and object oriented programming <laughs> We, we, we know an indie game developer that could use you one day. Yeah? <laughs> Facts. Well, I plan to, I want to develop my own game eventually. Me and Jack have been talking about starting a project, so... Well, if you need we'll testers, see. let me know. <laughs> I will. I'll freaking... We still need to get an idea figured out. But, I'll freaking yeah. uh, do that shit on stream. I, yeah, I definitely want to I think Mike do... froze. I, there he is. Dang, just as I was about to hit screen <laughs> yeah, capture, yeah, too. Yeah, still not great. Just That's as okay. I was about to hit screen Can somebody clip how Mike no. just froze for me, please? Can you not? That'd be good. P please, Sally, please. I got it. Thank you. You, should, you. you guys should work with uh, with, with Captain on a game. That'd be, a, that'd be interesting. That'd be a good collab. Space <clears throat> Captain? Yeah, he's got his uh, orbitals coming out soon, right? Yeah, he, yeah, he just got, like... A lot of good hype from when he went to PAX East for it. Yeah, that's right. He was at PAX and like they're about to have like a demo in the Steam store, right? Oh yeah. I'm yeah. Super excited for them. Oh, yeah. That's gonna be awesome. Apparently Gaming yeah. Devil's gonna be one of his uh first people that's gonna play the game for him. Nice. Hell yeah. Yeah, watching 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 him get his game into development and like seeing the the preview of all of that. Love and then excited. also like Yes, like playing, <laughs> like, because I also love indie games, so like Dead Cells, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Hyper Light Drifters, another indie game that I love, or like, those two games, like, are two of my favorite indie games I've ever played. Well, and sometimes you never know, because things like Stardew and was just an indie game when they yeah. came out. Yeah, right, exactly. So And like, like Among Us, was, like, took a year before it took off. Yeah, 
actually Among Us was out for a long time, but or yeah. like a, I think it was like two years before. It was a long. Because I remember time. hearing, I thought I remembered hearing something about like they were about to just shut it down because no one was playing it, and, and then, then like, like all of a sudden it just exploded, and they were like, "We don't have the servers for this." Yeah, yeah, and like people were like modding it for like people that are playing it and stuff like that. You got yeah. guys like Disguise Toast are like pumping up these guys like, "Oh, this is actually a pretty brilliant game." Like, oh yeah. Honestly, like, it didn't the same thing, wasn't it Valorant that the same, or something, one game like that that the same thing Everybody stretch! Where it was like, oh. I am Good stretching, you just can't, I was gonna say, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't see Dev do it. <laughs> <laughs> he could just have his person do it and make it look like he's doing it. Well, no, because if I move... I guess it's completely, it's like a motion capture, right? Yeah pretty much all it is like i'm gonna actually save up and get the uh rigs so i can actually have hand movement but that's well, like, expensive like, like like i've told uh space before lofi like if you guys get something going we'll definitely 100 percent support you guys too i appreciate um, that because like it's always good to support really cool projects and people trying to do their own thing so. Yeah, we we we've, we've been talking about it for a while. I've had some ideas floating around in my head, mostly inspired by like other games that I've played. So I need to definitely storyboard and come up with some more original concepts. But Jack and Sally have apparently been talking about a game for a little while too. So we might kind of all go in on something together, and we'll see. I've been yeah, having a lot really of fun cool. with Blender and Unity, man. Those those two softwares are so so. The first time I opened Unity and started messing around with it, it completely blew my mind. I had never seen anything like it. Wow. It's really, really cool. Oh yeah, no. I've I've looked at Unity and messed around in Unity and it's like uh, <laughs> Error. Error. <laughs> error. And that's why Jeff gets people to do it for him. Yep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was actually that was something I was working on like right before break too. Was like Blender isn't something that's included in the curriculum that I'm doing, but Unity is. So I was like doing some Blender stuff on my on the on the side, like trying to figure out how to build the um like uh VR chat avatars. Nice. And oh, nice. Uh, it's like that process isn't super complicated. It's I, and I really want to start, kind of start doing it because it's like it's really fun. I'm just not very artistic, so I don't think I'd ever like I could do the technical side, but I don't think I'd ever make an avatar that looks like cool. <laughs> you know what I though? Mean, you're with practice. Here, here's the thing. Hey. Have you ever actually been on VR chat? Oh, yes. Way have you much. have you seen some of the? <laughs> have you seen some of the avatars that are out there? Yes. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've yeah. seen some interesting ones too. Just, oh, just, yeah. just for the moment, just for the brief <clears throat> time I was with Deb and Mark. Mike, 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 yep. Mike, Mike. VR chat. I did. I, finally <laughs> I did. know. I haven't done it ever since, but I know. Yeah, I, I love VR chat. It's, it's you, stupid. You, you, but know it's it's fun. <laughs> you know what it is? You know what it was, Deb? It's because I didn't know Penlock people, so I was kind of awkward of how to like present myself to them. <laughs> Honestly, just be yourself. Okay, Deb. Maybe next time. Maybe if she ever pastures me again, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that could happen. I'm sure that could, I I haven't talked to her in a while, actually. Yeah, she's been really busy. Yeah, I figured. She's always a, a busy penguin. I was gonna say she's she's always been a very busy penguin. <laughs> so Lofi. So yeah. yeah. Lofi, <laughs> Your profile profile on Twitch says you're a UFO enthusiast. Oh my god. Okay, I what, forgot what does that, that mean. That. I so like I said, I'm like very much into like true crime, the weird and the paranormal. So like I don't know. I I I go back and forth on whether or not I believe like aliens have been here, but like I follow so many UFO subreddits that just like post crazy ass videos. <laughs> And I've gotten pretty good at spotting ones that are like, that's definitely just like a balloon or a satellite. And then there are ones that pop up every once in a while where you're like, that's really freaking weird. But 
I don't know. I just, the whole phenomena is crazy. There's so many bizarre abduction stories that, like, people from all over the world have, like, these experiences that cannot be explained. There's evidence left behind, and there's, like, details that are similar between them and people that there's no way they could have, like, had any interaction with, yeah. like, across the globe. And, like, I don't know what's going on. And, like, yeah. I'm. I'm inclined, like, I am I tend to be a very skeptical person, but, like, once you start saying, like, there's, you know, thousands and thousands of people that have had these experiences, there's some sort of evidence that we don't understand that's been left behind that, like, people study, and, like, sometimes it mysteriously vanishes, and, and they, then some... And they, and they can't really explain it, and it's there forever, even, sometimes? Yeah, yeah, or, yeah. like, and, and now, like, the nasa and the u.s government and all of and the military is like openly saying they're investigating unidentified aerial phenomena and they don't know what it is and there's dozens and dozens of pilots and sailors and people in the navy and officers and all these kinds of people that are seeing these things that do stuff that shouldn't be possible move in ways that defy all laws of physics and aviation that we understand and I don't know. It's it's yeah. super interesting to me. I, it I can weirds me it. the fuck out, and like yeah. I, I want to know what's going on. But like, until then, I'm just gonna watch. There, there's <laughs> even landmarks in human history that historians <clears throat> cannot explain fully how they became the yeah. thing. Like, well, exa- and like the uh, the uh, the Sum- oh not not the Sum- was it the Sumerians um, um, or the Mesopotamians? I forget. It's one of the earliest civilizations yeah, that I, came I know up with a written with a written language. Um, when you read their history of like how they figured out how to write, how they figured out agriculture, how they figured out architecture, like their own writings say people came from the heavens and brought us this knowledge and a lot taught of us Egyptian, how to do it. A lot of Egyptian culture. You know? Yeah. And like you'll see in like Mayan arch- Mayan drawings and Egyptian drawings and in Mesopotamian drawings and drawings in Turkey of like a very similar being coming down from the heavens that looks humanoid with like an animal like head holding a bag a a, a bag or box or something mm. and like it's it's been drawn in all these different cultures and like they don't know what the connection is and it's just really or like stuff bizarre. like. Uh... Like stuff like the Easter Island statues, they can't fully understand, or the Stonehenge. Yep. Like how yes. These things actually come because no one has a full explanation because it's so many years ago. We have no idea. Yeah, and there was like no written language, and like the people nobody lived at Easter there. Island at the time, as a, according to recorded history. So why are they there? Yeah, and they're huge too. It's not just the heads; it's these massive and they were statues that go like way underground. Yep. Yeah, they're really yeah. strange. Yeah, or so like I the can, Nazca can... lines and and like all those different picto, uh, pictographs in the desert yeah. that are like hundreds of feet across that you could only see from the sky and were only discovered and once we started the flying that died planes. Thousands of years ago, but we have no it, idea. Yeah, and yeah. We didn't discover it until planes were invented. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So I, I can definitely I see you're definitely I, I I'm I'm usually skeptic too, but like there are things like that where it's like believe that something else didn't influence that in a way. like i said yeah. man there's and a also, there is a higher power but we're a freaking a television show for aliens man you sound like you're high right now Jeff. <laughs> that was the point dude oh, okay. I, mean, I just, <laughs> I just gotta been. say i just gotta say the universe <sighs> is so much more vast and so much more exactly we comprehend and yeah. like we'll never comprehend i, I just there's so much there's just so like the odds are like of there being habit habited planets out there like there's it's so the the chances of there not being stuff out there so is slim. lower than there being nothing out there yeah um, yep. so I, I have to I have to believe that somewhere out there there is other planets with at least animals on it if not like or like fresh water beings. that we can like live on exactly and like I, I i like i have to believe too like this universe is like 13.4 billion years old or however old and we came about pretty freaking late and if you put our timeline on like 
the birth of the universe to where we are right now on like a 24 hour timeline humans only take up like the last like thousandth of a second of our entire like yeah, existence it's so crazy there's a really good likelihood that there's stuff that's been around for a long freaking time that we just haven't seen yet. so do you watch like a lot of like sci-fi shows and movies too or Oh yeah, I'm a big Star Wars nerd. I love Star Trek, like uh, Alien. I mean, Dark Skies, like all sci-fi horror and things like that. I'm I'm all about it. What's your What's your favorite Star Trek series? Mm. There is a right answer. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I you're into. I mean, I went through and watched like the the Jean Luc Picard era movies yes, with my mom. A, yeah, with my mom a few years back, and I I love those movies. And I have to say, like after even having seen like the old show, and like we've been uh, me and Jack watch uh, Deep Space Nine all the time. Okay. Um, I I love the old movies. And Deep Space I even, Nine is I, pretty I, good too. Yeah, I do like it. I even honestly, I even like the new movies that came out with uh, Chris Pine and, and yeah, they're Zachary just like Pinto. they're just action movies in space. It's not a bad thing. Right? Well, and they kind of just like re they didn't like exactly rehash it, but it was like all the same like the origin story of all the same characters, and it was actors that I liked and good. It was a reboot. So I, I really uh, the captain that. with with yeah yeah Christopher good. Pike. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. That's right, Pike. Or yeah. Chris, or I thought the actor's name was Chris. Paul. No, no, no. He's talking about the captain that. Uh, yeah. Took, they, they flip. That he flipped. Like, yeah. Where uh, the, the captain that, dies in that movie instead of. That's right. Um, yeah. yeah, they did kind of yeah. change it a little bit, but then they like explained why. If I remember, and, if, yeah. if I remember right, the name is Pike. Something like that. It's been a minute since yeah. I watched them. I'm and definitely like, more of like a Star Wars fan. Like, Khan was great. Like. <laughs> Yeah, I, I did like those movies a lot. I really enjoyed like the special effects in them were fucking cool. That like so, space dive scene, like I remember oh, the first yeah. time seeing that in the theater, I was like, holy uh, shit, that's so cool. Yeah. So up until this latest debacle of Star Trek stuff, I've uh, seen every episode of every season. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I haven't. I didn't. I wasn't really into Discovery. I will say I'm not the biggest fan of Discovery. It was not my favorite season. I will I will say that my favorite was indeed, you know, Captain Picard. It's hard to top next gen and then they tried to like with Enterprise as a prequel show and it just wasn't the same, even though Scott Bakula is really good. Yeah. I haven't seen any of the new stuff. I've been watching a more of like I keep more up with Star Wars. Star Wars was definitely the, the like the movie for, for so the what's, series. What's your for favorite generation up. of Star Wars? Um, because there's I mean, definitely camps. <laughs> I don't know. I I was at the right age for like the prequel trilogy because Man, like the first the uh, like uh, Phantom Menace came out in '99, and and it was like 2002 and 2005 or whatever for the other two. Mm -hmm. Um, so I grew up with those, but I also grew up watching the original trilogy. So I grew yeah. up with all six movies, and I love all of them. Um, but I have I, to say, if I'm if I'm gonna pick any of them for my favorite i'm probably gonna get hate for this but episode three with anakin turning to darth vader and just the whole thing for the turn to the dark side i think i think that's my favorite movie of the nine that's out I, now i mean i can i can respect turning to the dark side they have cookies <laughs> But of the new movies, I think Rogue One is my favorite. Rogue One came out and blew my mind. I really liked that one. I didn't like. I liked the 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 sequel trilogy, like when I first saw it. But like, rewatching it, it doesn't hold up as strongly. But like the new series, I I like Boba Fett. I like Mandalore. I liked Mandalorian a lot. I'm enjoying Obi Wan so far. But uh, like of the new stuff, Rogue One, I think yeah. is like the yeah. best they've done. I saw a lot of hate for Kenobi. I'm like, I don't mind the Kenobi stuff because you're getting the idea of like why he's going through PTSD, basically. Yeah, exactly. There's definitely some stuff that I think they could have done better. Like, like there's definitely some scenes like yeah. we, like me, Sally, and Jack watch it, and we'd be like, "What the fuck? <laughs> like, why did you do that?" Doesn't adult. make any. <laughs> yeah, you know, that doesn't I... make any sense. Or like Darth Vader just like standing on one side of the fire, and he could have just gone after him, but like. You have to just be like, well, he's probably yeah. letting him get away on purpose, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. 
there is definitely some things in that show where I'm like, they could have done that better. But like, I'm still, yeah. I'm seeing you and McGregor and and Anakin on screen again and like loving it. You so. McGregor is still so underrated as Obi Wan Kenobi. Ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. And he studied the original. Like he he wants to make it like the best he can in his own way. Mm -hmm. You can tell he's trying his best to make Obi Wan a thing. Yeah, he is yeah. trying. He's doing his best. Because the Obi Wan we all know is the one that's like cool, old, badass dude. But like, we don't Especially know. Especially if you didn't... watch the Clone Wars series, you know, like, yeah. Obi Wan is like this super kick ass Jedi general. Like, yep. you're, you're well, not we don't used know to why seeing he stopped him. doing it for 10 years. You know, like, why did he just forget everything in 10 years? Or why is he like. And then you start seeing the flashbacks to why he is the way he is, and you understand why it takes yeah. some time to get back to it. Well, if you like, like, with the Clone Wars series and episode three like you really see throughout clone wars anakin's descent to the dark side and then episode three like is like you kind of like you watch the clone wars series and... and then episode three and you can see that progression to the dark side and you see all the shit that they went through during the clone wars together and then order and 66 happens <laughs> yeah and then order 66 happens <laughs> and all of his friends get murdered all of the children Execute that he has been training 66. like that they've all been yeah. training are murdered by his best friends like and he's on the run and he had, and he had and a he chance thought, to kill anakin he never did it he did yeah he and, so, and so he's been on the run and like not to mention like if he had maintained his connection this is where i really like show how much of a fucking star wars nerd I oh am. that's that's perfectly fine you see like if he had maintained a, as strong of a connection with the force as he used to have anakin would have found him no fucking yeah, because they killed that kid in Kenobi. Yeah, he was one of the younglings that escaped. Yeah, <laughs> they found him because he started using his powers. Oh, spoiler alert! Oh, for anybody who hasn't seen Kenobi. Wow, man! Cool. Wow. But still, like you could tell in like episode one, like you could tell like he just doesn't understand how to use his powers again, and you understand. Yeah, why. it was just it's been a, it's been a long time. It's kind of the same thing like you see with Yoda on Dagobah when he's training Luke, like. Yoda doesn't like actually do a whole lot of force using. And it's he's mostly old as fuck, it's, Yoda. yeah, nine hundred years old, and so it's mostly him teaching Luke how to do stuff. Because <laughs> yeah. like Yoda's like, he's not too doing old this. now. Yeah, <laughs> like he was past he was past his prime when sixty six happened. Yeah, too Yoda old for the like, shit I am. Yoda was in his like mid like mid to late eight hundreds during Order sixty six, and then immediately pieced out to Dagobah for the next like twenty years. So. Yeah. And, and, and you see that even in the new series, you see, like, why Luke Skywalker started losing it, too, because he hid himself away on an island forever. Yeah, and like, yeah. He, it's he not, blamed himself it's not for the uncommon. current empire. So it's like, you, you, you see the parallels in a way, even though yeah. it wasn't the most direct path they could have taken. <laughs> yeah. But you see the parallels between, you know, the first, the, the prequel generation to the sequel generation. Yeah, definitely. And that's why it's like that's why i think that's like i think sometimes star wars fans are just a lot of them are too picky because like the like the, they're like to the point where like the new ones are so bad like maybe the second of the new ones but like they're not bad still honestly it's it's a soap opera yeah <laughs> well i think people got mad that like the sequel trilogy like me and jack were actually talking about this the other day i think what bothered people about the sequel trilogy was like they basically just rehashed the same storyline as the original trilogy with yeah. the star killer base is just the death star and like it's yeah, just and the, I can understand it's just the rebels trying that. to take down the death yeah. star again which like i can totally understand why people are like that's kind of bullshit so i, but get I also that. understand disney's perspective it's, it's a 45 year old movie we yeah try to do a different generation yeah, yeah. Think, it's with the raid of one thank you very at the much same for time, that raid if they didn't change directors, it probably would have flowed a lot better. If they didn't change directors midway through and then brought them back for the last movie, which made yeah, sense. it was like they they ended up with all these different like threads going off in these different and directions. Different characters that didn't need to be in. Like, yeah, or like they they set up all this stuff. Like I really, from the teasers to the trailers to actually watching the movies, I thought they were going to reveal that Finn was also force sensitive and also was going to end up being never happened. Be a Jedi. And then that never happened, and I was pretty bummed about that. And then, you guys have obviously seen the, the sequel trilogy, right? Yep. I have, yeah. Okay, so, spoilers if anyone has Spoilers, everyone. I was going to say, spoiler alert! Just mute, and then still be a yeah. viewer. 
uh, uh, Ray being a Palpatine was such a cop, cop out. I think it is. I think, yeah. yeah. I think it would have like I was totally okay with Ray being like a nobody from 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 nowhere, a nobody from nowhere, and it was or just like, like the, the force that died somebody. many years ago. <laughs> it, it, I don't know about that. Yeah, like, but, I, don't like know. I was like I was okay. Like I was totally cool with Ray being a nobody and Finn yeah. being a nobody, and then them yeah. just being like. Read, like maybe rebuilding the Jedi Order or something like and I think but, it was JJ Abrams trying to fix what Ryan Johnson did in the second movie and it kind of just exactly, didn't work. That's exactly what happened. That was, it, there was they no had explanation to like tie up the all this movie. stuff for the third one. Yeah. So because Ryan Johnson didn't explain anything in the second movie, he just added a 45 minute scene where they're hanging out at a bar looking for somebody, <laughs> and you're like, why is this here? And then poor Finn looks just like a bad character because it's like a waste of his time. Yeah, and then they like they. I feel like they totally could have like they made Phasma, Captain Phasma, out to be like she was gonna be such a huge player in the series, and like they cast fucking Gwendolyn Christie as Phasma, and like coming off of yeah like, Game of Thrones, and like they were like chick. Gwendolyn Christie's in it. She's like a fucking super scary badass like clone commander. And she's like legit or a big lady that looks badass. Yeah, yeah, and it was like they they like teased it so much, and then it was like they did nothing with her and so like i totally <laughs> yes. understand like i totally understand yeah. like star wars fans like gripes with the trilogy with the trilogy i still enjoyed them the first time that i watched yeah them. And, and we and still I... got rogue one and we got the solo movie out of it which i also really liked the solo movie i i think rogue is what i thought like episode three should have been kind of like in a way yeah it's like it it, it sets up four so well yeah yeah i think it isn't it you watch it's like episode three and then rogue one and then four is like yeah the because rogue one is order. like literally goes right into four because they yeah. die saving the bitch. file for leia yeah the ending scene is leia is leia flying away and then the opening scene of four is leia flying in. yeah which i thought was like was brilliant and like what's with the they, scene they, they, they they the scene yeah. of Darth Vader at the end of Here's rogue one. Oh my like, god in the hallway <laughs> So oh, good. Killing you, that everything. was one of the first times you got to see Darth Vader like really kick ass in a and, movie. And like Leia's crew awesome. is like closing every door to try to stop him long enough for her to get out. <laughs> no, it was so good. I love that it was, movie. It was like it was a super intense moment for a Star Wars movie. Like it was super oh, intense. Yeah. You finally got to see how fucking terrifying Darth Vader actually is and why yeah. he's like the boogeyman of the Star Wars universe because he earned that title. Yeah, he he, he was definitely the, his badass most in a long time in that movie and then you get darth maul in the solo movie which was really cool <laughs> wait was he really in this yeah movie? He, he was like uh he was the one that was like the puppet the guy pulling the puppet strings the whole time Shit, for, I think I need to uh, watch Amelia, solo again. for amelia clark's character she was like her, she was like his little insider okay i think i yeah you're right i need to yeah. I, damn i need to go back and watch solo again and that was it's like that was minute. That would have been like a few, that would have been like a few years before he dies in battle, right? So, uh, he, I'm, I'm pretty sure because Solo was young there, so I'd imagine it'd be pretty close to that time. I'm trying to remember. I can't remember if it, if because he was... dies in Phantom Menace. I wonder if it's like a few years before Phantom Menace. He dies in Phantom Menace. Supposedly. What you think? Yeah. <laughs> Supposedly. <laughs> That's. I'm hoping, could... I'm hoping he comes back again because he was a cool character that kind of just got kind of. He's in Clone on. Wars. Yeah. The Clone Wars series. He he plays a big role in the Clone Wars series. His brother's in that too. And my favorite of the shows is probably I like Mandalorian the best, just because I like old westerns and it's very old western style and it's. Yeah. And Pedro Pascal shot... is so good at it. Yeah, the way they shot that show is really cool. Like yeah. they have a basically a giant like projector set. It's like one big TV screen, mm -hmm. and there's like certain set elements that are closer to the camera. But as like the characters move and the camera moves, there's a like the screen in the background that's displaying what you're see like the background of like the landscape will actually yeah. parallax and move with the camera and like match the movement. So like even though they're on a set, you're seeing like a very hyper realistic looking background that is just it, moving. It, they very much the copy a Clint Eastwood style film from back yeah. in the day. Where it's like it's all, really cool. Yeah, it was. I thought that was really cool, and like the, the cameos from like Katie Sackhoff's character is really cool in it. Yep, 
Yeah, and, and I like I like that they still use puppets and like all those practical effects and like they really like a lot of the stuff for Mandalorian was like all like it was actually there or like they were actually on a set that like it wasn't green screen like they're actually standing on sand and there is like a mm -hmm. mountainous background behind them it's just a big screen like it's just it's cool that they went that route with that show I appreciate that a lot Dev we're not using that to do it all. <laughs> come on that, that's my face when he said episode three was good. <laughs> <laughs> but you can use that in a lot of situations, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I knew I would get hate for that one. Everyone, anytime okay. you say you I like watch any of the mess, honestly. That's what I'm, that's, I, I do have, like I said, I have a soft spot in my heart for the, for the prequel trilogies. Like everything from the pod racing up until episode three. Like I just enjoy the fuck out of those movies and I won't lie. Yeah, I think Mike uh, froze up again here. Sure did. What I what I love is that he keeps freezing on such interesting faces. <laughs> no, I love it. It's great. I know it's it's great. I, I love it again. <laughs> How far are we along now, Dev? I've, we've lost track after the Star Wars talk. <laughs> I mean, considering that the Star Wars talk took about an hour. Really? Sorry. I, no, no, it only took like twenty minutes. Oh, okay. we're, like, we're, we're, we were that long. We're sitting at about an hour and 21 minutes right now. Oh, okay. All right. This is still pretty good then. Okay. Uh, maybe we should get back into some game talk. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Is there uh, is there anything up and coming that you want us to play? Like anything coming out? Uh, like, I know you talked about a few of them, but like, uh, is there any other releases? Aside from Scorn, there really hasn't... Like everything else has been delayed until next year lots of games have been delayed oh yeah so many um, freaking games like starfield I'm, is delayed another year what is i'm keeping see, okay i'm keep i'm i am like hesitantly excited about starfield me like, too it's I like another, Bethesda. i don't know man like, it's another bethesda game it has a lot of potential but the thing is is that they're doing the same thing that they've done with all their other games and they're making a lot of fucking promises and I don't know if they're going to keep all of them because they have a history of yeah. making lots of promises and then delivering like a really half-baked game. So at, at least it's not fable level of promises. <laughs> oh yeah, my God. yeah. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm excited, but I will wait until that game comes out to actually buy it. I'm at not going to pre-order it. I, I do admire that they take their time instead of them being like listening to all the people like bring it out. No, we're not. Cyberpunk not 20, 20, 20, I think, whatever. Yeah, I think after Cyberpunk happened, everybody like, kind of, no, everybody wait. kind of stopped. I feel like, the, like, like gamers as a community kind Project of Project Red like, was like a reputable company until that game came out. Yeah, yeah I think I, I really think after that happened, like I really stopped seeing a lot of the push from gamers in general to like get games yeah. out faster because like that was just such game. like exactly like I forget I think it was. Kojima actually said, like, a rushed game is always going to be bad, but a delayed game will eventually be good. And, like, I'd rather, like, get, like, Scorn, like I said, Scorn was originally announced in, like, 2017, and then the project went dark for five years. And now yeah. it's it's about to come out this November, and it looks fucking awesome. Oh, and, see, like, I and, would... And with, I, I saw the uh, beginnings of, like, the Starfield stuff, and, like, it looks like they're going back to more of, like, an old school style fallout which is exactly what people wanted to see starfield do yep yeah so i'm i'm hoping it, like i'm hoping it's good i hope there's a good amount of content i know they're saying there's going to be like a thousand planets and you can visit all of them there's a good chance that probably only like 10 of those is going to have like yeah. really good content that you they, can go see most of it's like probably going to be empty and, yeah. yeah so or, we'll see i'm i'm hesitantly or, excited <laughs> Or they could be doing like it's it's a base game, and then over time they add more shit as like that's their main thing, like almost like yeah. Elder Scrolls Online, but like yeah, yeah. But I mean, if we're if we're talking about games we're excited for, and that got pushed back, Digimon Survive is actually coming. <laughs> it's coming out. You know what? Fuck you both. <laughs> Fuck you both, and you're fucking chuckling and giggling at me. Whoa, I'm whoa, not. Whoa, I just. Whoa. I don't. All right, yo. Like. Hostile. Di Digimon. Lost in here right now. 
I just don't. I just. I don't know shit about Digimon. I know Pokemon <laughs> yeah. decently, and like uh-huh. I know like Yu-Gi-Oh. A po- little bit. I, I don't know okay, po- here we go. Pokemon, Violet or Scarlet? I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I what... actually the only games I've actually bought or the only oh, Pokemon games you not that I've actually the new played. Ones? I've only ever actually really played Pokemon Go and Pokemon Community Game. I have never bought and sat down and played a Poke like a you... regular ass Pokemon game myself. I I've, I've been playing Arceus because I just bought it and I'm like, you know what? This is actually really good. I think you'd enjoy Arceus because it's kind of like Pokemon. Uh huh. I've been watching. It's basically Pokemon Breath of the Frozen Wa- or Breath of the Wild. Uh, Breath of the Frozen. Well, I was Bre- thinking. Okay, so I was thinking. I was thinking of Horizon Zero Dawn, and then Horizon had a had a had an expansion called Horizon Frozen Wilds. That was really good. But Sally has been playing uh, Arceus as well, and I keep seeing it being like that looks kind of fun. It, I can yeah, especially when it's like a, it's like literally a Pokemon prequel, like 150 years before the first. Pokemon that's a run. yeah, that's what it was like throwing me off because I was watching her play it and I was like, these people don't know shit about and the, Pokemon. And the Pokeballs and are then, like literally an actual acorn with a magic thing in it. Yeah, or it's like literally like a ter- like a terracotta ball. <laughs> like oh it's my... crazy. And the Pokemon are actually like killing people because they don't know how to control properly. Yeah, yeah, and that was like that was this, uh, the conversation because I, I thought was, like, it was talking really this... cool. Yeah, I was talking to Sally because I was like, they don't know anything in this game. But then we were watching one of the newer Pokemon series. I can't remember, or one of the new Pokemon movies, and I can't remember what it was called. Um, but it I, it came out pretty recently, and I was like, man, like their technology has like advanced. Like they know a lot more about the Pokemon. They've like they've brought way more of like the spiritual and mystical side of the Pokemon into yeah. this. And Sally was like, well, like... yeah. She was like, they've learned a lot since like indigo league and i was like yeah that makes a lot of sense that, and i'm glad that they incorporate the all the accumulated knowledge of like the games the shows the movies and like all that stuff you actually see like the universe like the whole society like learning more and more about pokemon and more pokemon showing up because so i thought it was kind of and like, then arceus cool. is like literally like ancient pokemon times you know? yeah yeah <laughs> like when they're just like regular wild animals pretty much yeah, yeah. Which is really cool i thought it was really cool oh no yeah, i been, i had a blast playing it I picked Cyndaquil because I'm like I've always loved Cyndaquil. Nice, yeah. I th- I feel like I should probably play because like I through Sally I've been really like getting into Pokemon like because she like all right weird fact about me I was not allowed to watch Pokemon as a kid. Nene? We we won't get into it. I don't I don't even. Again? <laughs> Honestly, I think it was because the animals evolved. Was <laughs> why I wasn't oh! allowed to watch it. It's a southern thing. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. So, so I've been, I've been getting into Pokemon now, like as an adult, because now I'm like, well, like there's Your like thirty years of Pokemon to go back and watch now. Like, go yeah. on, let's yeah. go through it. Yeah. Like and I've missed some generations. I'm like, stuff. what is this Pokemon? What the fuck is this thing? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. As I'm playing Arceus, I'm like, I don't remember this being a real Pokemon. I don't remember this being a thing. <laughs> Some of them have definitely gotten a little lazy, like the key ring Pokemon, and then there's the one that's literally that just like a pile of trash. Really Let's not forget the ice, ice cream, cream cone. cone. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> ice cream cone. The candle that turns into a chandelier at the end of his evolution. <laughs> <laughs> like, why is this a thing? Like, so, I know, I know, my generation had done sparse, but like, it wasn't that stupid. Yeah. See, that's why yeah. I'm I'm happy to be, you know, OG. <laughs> Gen yeah, one. I'm just coming into it now, so I have no I, I attachments played, to anything. I'm just like, oh, that one's cool. That one sucks. I played up to gold and then stopped for a while and then came back to Ruby and Sapphire and then didn't play again for like 10 years. Well, no, well, no what I'm saying, Luffy, is I had the the OG Pokemon, you know? I had. How many? Was it like 150? 150. 150 was the, 150 was the yeah. original generation. Yeah. And then they added like the ability to get Mew and Mewtwo, so you get. 151, 152, and yeah, that's then right. gold and silver, and then that got you like another like 100, I think. Yep. But I was saying, we're into what, like, like 900 and something now? Yeah. Or 800 it's and something? Crazy. It's, but it's, it makes uh, sense because they're real animals in real life, so they, there's thousands of species, right? So it makes sense. That's fair. 
And apparently there's thousands of different kinds of ice cream, too. <laughs> well, yeah, well, they I... skirt it. To, they, like, give you new versions of Pokemon by saying they're from, like, different regions and stuff. Yeah, that part's so get, cool. Like, yeah, so you get, like, Pokemon that are, like, the same, but they have, like, a completely different... Yeah. Book, so... Or not completely different, but, like, a very different... When you play, like, Pokemon Sun, characters. you're, like, basically in the Hawaiian Islands. So X yeah, the yeah, Executor is basically has a long a neck. Long neck. Yeah. yeah. The and like some of them are different, the some of different colors but because was... of the sun in the Hawaiian Islands. Well, his, yeah. here you go. You figure with the Vulpix, you know, Vulpix is fire type. Yet yeah, the, and then you get the, the Alolan one is ice. Yeah. yeah. It like lives in like a cave or whatever. It's like an ice yeah. monster. Or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Like, and that's kind of cool. To me, that's, that's cool. cool. To me, that is yeah, cool. Yeah, no, I like I like the way they do the Pokemon. <clears throat> Our Grimer's like a, a green sludge ball instead of... Yeah. It looks I like know a... Pokemon Go Algae. did like a little event while back for when, when Arceus was released. And like they were... There was Pokemon that were in the world that were from the region that Arceus was based in. So like you were having these Voltorbs pop up that were the... Yeah. That were like they were like like the all the dialogue in game was like these pokemon shouldn't exist they're from like hundreds of years ago like where the fuck did they come from it was like really fun to have it tied into the game that was i forgot what out. region arceus is supposed to be in. i think it's like ancient. uh it starts ancient. with an oh. h i think uh i can't remember what it is though because I, I remember them talking about like uh, uh, there's this region called johto or whatever which we go just Sally before. would know. I was about to say, I know Sally's in chat. Uh, come on, Sally. Sally, what? What? Bring what that. Area? Bring that br big brain knowledge. As somebody who just played part of it, I still don't remember what they said because I wasn't really reading it that hard. <laughs> <laughs> I it's just wanted this. to learn how to catch things. That's all I wanted to do. <laughs> it's the Sinnoh region. That's what I thought. It is Sinnoh. Okay. Yeah, it's like ancient Sinnoh. So any the Pokemon from Sinnoh region should appear. In the same yeah. place 150 years ago. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. Which is cool to me. I didn't like. I didn't realize that they tied in like the. I I didn't realize like they tied in like their game releases with like Pokemon Go. I didn't know I they really, did that either. But that's yeah. Cool. I had no idea. Yep. But it's pretty cool. It was fun like catching Pokemon then, and then like watching Sally play and be like, oh, I've caught a bunch of those Voltorbs. Like that looked just like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's supposed to be like the oldest region in the lore, I guess. So something like that. It's like the first, like, I guess the first like villages that settled to find. I don't know. It's 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 apparently really the oldest region though. So. Yeah, it's cool. Which I believe would be in the games, Diamond and Pearl. Yeah. Something like that. I believe, I believe so. so. That's that's how much I know. I don't really know as much either. <laughs> I'm just like based on what I've recently played. Yeah, I've it's, the, played, like, it's the prequel to Diamond and Pearl. Yeah, because I've because I've played the re-release of those recently too. Okay, I really want to get like the old like red or uh, Pokemon Red, Pokemon <laughs> Blue. Just get the emulator and just play that out. And I I'm, I might just have to do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, stream it. Let's go. Yeah, stream oh, out. Yeah. Stream major loaf playing pokemon like actual pokemon and for like the learning first how to time. do it like, like he's like 50 years old never seen it before <laughs> <laughs> at least i know i know a little bit about what types are effective against what because i yeah. did do battles in pokemon go so i kind of get that i do understand that and you know mechanic. what's you know what, like a lot of the ogs from pokemon go are gonna be in yeah the game, yeah <laughs> pokemon go had mostly all the ogs yep. yeah I think they only had up to like number four or five for a while. Yeah, Canada. I think it's still like that. They only have they don't have a lot of the new stuff. In Apparently, Pokemon it depends on the country because I traded with Vord, who's from Costa Rica, and he brought a lot of a lot of ones from Costa Rica that are like you can't find anywhere else oh yeah like apparently tauros is like an is one that like really commonly spawns and yeah and, and it's like only in north yeah. america he yep. wanted so me to trade with tauros and he gave me something i forgot what it was but i i caught a tauros for him and then he said can you trade it to me i'll give you something that's only in costa rica that's like, awesome okay. that's <laughs> yeah I, I ended up getting his pokemon from like at like i can't remember there's one that i have that's from like some really far away country because it like got traded or like the egg got traded and then it got traded to me i don't know how but it was like <laughs> one of the furthest trades yeah, i had eggs yeah yeah it was crazy and you get like points for like a thousand miles or whatever 
Because mm -hmm. Vord's thing is connected to Costa Rica, even though he's right next to me. And so the trade was like <laughs> like to, like a thousand thousand kilometers away, and you get like a, a bonus thing for that. Like, oh, nice. That's cool. Damn you get like a bonus Pokemon nice. that's only from a certain. You can only get it from that, from reaching that point or whatever. So it's like they do things like that, which is cool. Yeah, and you get like lucky trades too if you have like Pokemon yeah. from certain years and events and stuff. Yeah, Neat. so it's actually a more interesting series than I used to probably think as a kid, honestly. Mm -hmm. the, the lore has changed so much and they've evolved so much of it. Yeah, that was like that's kind of what I've been learning over the last like few weeks of watching the shows and stuff because I'm like. I we just watched Indigo League because I hadn't seen all of it, and then we and started watching Netflix. some of the, yeah, it was it's all on Netflix, and so we started watching some of the newer ones, and I was like, damn, this universe is like, like Ash was huge. way dumber thirty years ago. <laughs> yeah, one, the kids were way stupider, and two, they've learned a lot, and they're still ten, and they're still ten. Say, they're Actually, still I think 10. Ash is supposed to be like fourteen now. I think yeah, he's supposed to be like a teenager now because he's like an old veteran of Pokemon. But still, he's aged four years in like <laughs> two decades. It's like the first ten episodes of Indigo League is like literally the first minute of the original game. Yeah, <laughs> right. You can literally walk <laughs> in two minutes. <laughs> See, Ash is really bad. It doesn't have a map or anything. Like, I literally walked that in two minutes. I don't know why it took him ten episodes. I mean, his Pokemon almost dies. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, he's ten. <laughs> How good at you? Were, how good were you at taking care of yourself? I was ten when I played the Pokemon. 10. That's fair. <laughs> that was something else we were talking about. Like, like, are the kids just like state sponsored? Like, they just <laughs> they never have to worry about money. Your mom abandons them and like they just go wherever they want. They don't like aside from like the original shows, they're talking about being hungry. But I don't know if that's just because they're constantly on adventures and walking everywhere. And like most of them or don't if, have dads. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they like the like. One or both of their parents are missing. They're just <laughs> out in the wild, like just reporting to Professor Oak. Yeah, they're just reporting to Professor Oak. And then, like, every time Ash calls his mom, she's like, I haven't heard from you in months. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And like, how do these kids afford to do Oak, this? I'm like, is she boning Professor Oak? Is that why Ash gets <laughs> what he wants? Like, when you're an adult, you don't realize there's, like, possibly a connection there. <laughs> I, I have to just assume that they're, like, just state-sponsored. Because, like, <laughs> where are the, like, they're not getting paid. Or, like, are they getting paid? Where do they sleep? Win, Ash never wins, so, like... <laughs> so then I'm even more confused at that point. Yeah, like, how is he eating? Like, did they just get down this food? rabbit hole. Oh, my God. I'm yeah, right? Just, like, if, like, if he didn't meet Brock, would he just starve to death? <laughs> Maybe. Oh my god. Because, <laughs> like, in, in Yu Gi Oh!, like, in the first season, they basically are starving to death until they find an outdoors book. Really? Yeah. yeah I don't remember season, that series. Like, starving well to death because there's no food or anything. I mean, like I said, in Indigo League, they are constantly talking about being hungry, but I don't know if it's just because they're walking and constantly active or if they're just. I think it's just because they're teenagers. Broken, starving. <laughs> It's like Misty's like fourteen, so I guess. <laughs> is she? I thought Brock isn't Brock like. Brock Brock's and Misty like are older than Ash. Yeah, I know. I thought Misty was like thirteen, and Brock's supposed to be like fifteen. Yeah, or there's 16 something like that in Indigo like League. Like yep. And it's like, and it's really weird because like it's obvious like Misty has a thing for Ash. It's like this is kind of creepy actually. Like, <laughs> if, if, if I mean it is, I will have to say it is anime. That's not it an is unusual, an anime thing. That is not like, an unusual Mike, thing that happens when in I was anime. Eight, Mike, I didn't know what anime was. <laughs> but but <laughs> right. Mike, Mike, yeah, you're pointing out that. Okay, mm -hmm. let's let's stop for a moment and okay. look at Brock. Uh -huh. There's yeah, joy, he's... Officer Jenny. Yeah, he's like a he's like a 15 year old. Kirby dude is always baked off his ass eating food. Hitting on... Hitting on everything. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny and Nurse Joy. <clears throat> when I was 15, I did the same as Brock. I can't... I can't... <clears throat> that. You're how old Hitting now? You probably still that do are it. like 10 years older than you, way out now. of your league. <clears throat> I'm 31. I don't do it now. Sometimes. I'm more picky now. No, you don't do it now because you actually have somebody. That's also true. <laughs> That's also fair. I just don't mention that. Brock is my spirit. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god, <laughs> Jack. Who's, was that Jack? Yeah, yeah it was. <laughs> Brock is my spirit. 
I was thinking the same thing. Hold on, hold on a second now. Hold on now. Hold on. That begs a lot of questions, Jack. Uh, and oh. Sally read my mind with that one. <laughs> well, I mean, nurse Jenny. Come on. Nurse Jenny Faye. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Sally just glare. Glare. All right, we should probably move on to the Pokemon talk just to save Jack's life. <laughs> All right, Luffy. Uh, what what's the game you were expecting to be good and were excited for, but turned out to be trash? Uh, you know, honestly, I think the one that really pops into my head, and it's been a while since this game first came out, but uh, Battlefront was like the oh, first yeah. game was like because that was like when I was really getting back into console gaming, that was like when I had bought my Xbox for my buddy, I started playing Borderlands and, and Overwatch, and I played Battlefront 1 and 2 like fucking crazy on my PS2, um, but just not for very long. So I was like, you know, they re-released it. I was like, fuck yes, they made a new one. And I remember buying it. I paid the full $60 for it, and I played it for like 15 minutes and was like, this game fucking blows. <laughs> yes! I had the same thought. It was like, it, it wasn't Battlefield, which I mentioned before on here. It was For Honor, the online game where you could be like a certain. Yeah, culture. I remember. I played it for like 15 minutes and realized that everyone just wanted to be summarized. It was broken, basically. That yeah, I, that was another game that like I was pretty hyped for coming out and remember even yeah, like talking sucked. to my. I remember even talking to my siblings about being pretty hyped about it, and then it was released, and I watched some gameplay, and I was like, this looks boring as fuck. It's it's a hack and slash that everyone picks Samurai, and no one's, it's not fun anymore at that point. It's like, okay. More recently, and, and I think a lot of people will probably get on board with this one, Outriders. Outriders disappointed the shit out of me. I don't think I've heard that one. Exactly. It was this game. <laughs> it was this. It, it, yeah. Uh, like, that's. Exactly. It was like this third person shooter game that everyone was like, oh, it's the new Destiny killer. Every couple of years, there's some new game co that comes out that everyone's like, oh, this is the new Destiny killer. It was Anthem, then it was Outriders. And there's been a couple others that have come and gone. But yeah, Outriders was like, you had like skill trees you could spec into, and it was third person. So it was kind of like. You, you like think of like skill trees kind of the way like Borderlands 2 does them so you have like okay. a ton of crazy ass abilities that you could build into but like they released the demo and then I replayed the demo a good bit with a couple of friends of mine and then they released the full game and I just never bought the full game because I was like I watched some of my other friends play the full game and I was like this is just it's literally the same gameplay loop as the as the demo like there's nothing new here yeah and I was like I'm not really interested in grinding this game like I've sucks. already got all this time invested in destiny 2 anyway but it yeah. was it was yeah, I remember being pretty excited about it and like and then, like, I played the demo, and I was like, it's cool, but meh. <laughs> like, that was basically my reaction to it. I'm hoping Scorn doesn't let me down, otherwise I'm going to be real upset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now you're just, like, building yourself up for I might cry. Now. I might cry if Scorn <laughs> like... ends up being bad, because I've been looking forward to that game for years. Yeah. Yeah, um, Somniac, I'm, I agree. That um, was the biggest fleece of last I year. I am feeling yeah. the same way with Digimon Survive. He's so pumped. I am okay. I I, I hope Digimon is survive. I, I is hope it, awesome. I hope it's great, Dev. I, I hope it's the best game you've ever played. I don't know about that, but <laughs> I, I hope it blows. I hope it knocks your socks off, legitimately. <laughs> well, that wouldn't be good because then my feet would bother me. <laughs> we we got uh, we got time for one. Uh, we got time for I think one more question, and then I gotta I gotta dip. I was gonna say. I mean, I was gonna say we are at an hour and forty-five. So. Okay. So I guess we could just wrap up then. I mean, well. The one, the one question we seem to enjoy asking. Okay. If you could live in a video game world, which one would it be? He plays a lot of FPSs. This might be a bad one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if I <clears throat> live in any video game world. And am I, like, a player character? Because, like, there's some video game worlds that, like, rock if you're a player character, but if you're just an NPC, you're fucked. Like, 
like any Bethesda game, pretty much. Yeah. So, <laughs> the, the first I used to be an adventurer like, till I took an arrow to the knee. Right, I and then and then some knee. fucking dragonborn came in and fucking leveled my village, and there wasn't fuck all I could do. And that was the last one left alive. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, if I'm gonna be like the player character, Destiny Two, like I that you just you don't die, and you just get to be a crazy ass base magic wielding kick ass demigod <laughs> basically. Shocking. And so. I'd probably want to live there, to be it's honest. Not, not, bad. <laughs> not a bad choice. <laughs> not, not a bad choice at all. What about what about a video game crush? Ooh. Hmm. Uh, I had a pretty big crush on Elizabeth from Bioshock Infinite when I started playing that game. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because okay. I used to, I was working a really hard job at that time, and like I would just come home at like 3 a.m., get drunk as shit, and then just play Bioshock <laughs> until 7 in the morning. This was and my so, life. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I totally developed a crush on Elizabeth while playing that game, and I was like, I should stop. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair enough. Fair enough. Well, I, I appreciate you for coming on, Lofi. I'm, I'm Bobby Thanks Vance for having me. Have you on. Lofi, my man, you got us a target to raid. Um, I'm looking at my list of people that I follow, and I think if you want to, Indy Falco sixty four. If you want to, Elden Ring. If you want to shoot me a DM with their link. Sure. Let me get it pulled up. Yeah, I've been like ever since we had Sally on. I'm like, we should get Lofi on, just like. You know. <laughs> I, I wanted to wait till you were like weren't busy because I knew you were in school and stuff too. Yeah. So. Yep. Now we maybe, are maybe on... towards like summertime he'll be free. So. Yeah, I'm actually gonna be on break until uh, the end of September or mid September at least. I think. So when are you back on uh, stream? Um. Well, this weekend or this week through next Monday. Start, or Tuesday to Monday, I'm going to be out of town. I'll be back home. And then the week after that is my birthday. So I probably I oh. might do something for my birthday a little bit, but I also kind of have plans Trump that weekend. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm going to try and I, – I don't think I'll be streaming this week, but I'm going to try and stream next week. Uh, I'm so, going to hold you to right. it. Okay. I might even stream tomorrow. We'll see. I don't know. If uh, if you're in uh, Dev's chat, and you're not familiar with Lofi. Uh, go go check him out. Go follow. Exclamation him. point guest. And uh, <laughs> even uh, even even if he doesn't stream, he is usually you can find him on Sally Nightmare whenever she comes back on as well. Yep. Um, oh yeah. And they're both I'm fantastic, there, especially when they work, especially when they play together. Yeah, we'll, we'll get her back. <laughs> we'll get we'll her some pummel party, and then she'll dominate us, and then we'll just like. Oh yeah, she'll fucking kick our ass. Bubble <laughs> party and Goose Goose Duck. If we get Jack yeah. and Sally together and Goose Goose yep. Duck, it's fucking over. <laughs> it's good, yeah. Us. And Somniac's always down for Goose Goose Duck. He likes stabbing me in that. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're the only one that tries to protect me in that game. <laughs> You're the only one that tries, Dev. I try. I do. I love you, Mike. I love you. Everyone else killed me. I either... I guess, uh, here we go. I either I, try to protect you or I just don't tell anyone when... Devil or Yeti kill you. That's also true. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we'll be back next week. I don't know who we're going to have quite yet. I'm talking to a few people. Uh, Dev probably has some people in mind as well. I have. So we'll, we'll keep you guys posted. I've for next constantly week's got show. people, man. Of course. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Good. But, um, so tell us again who we're raiding out to here, Lofi. Uh, Indy Falco. It's a friend of Sally and I's. He's. A great guy. He's really funny. He plays Elden Ring. Uh, he's been playing a lot of Elden Ring lately. He plays Faz. A whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, he's great. And I great. think y'all are really going to like him. Alright, so final thoughts. Uh, um, <laughs> get better Wi-Fi so people don't have freeze frames of you. <laughs> Stream more often so that when you're on a podcast that acts of that asks about your stream career you actually have stuff to talk about <laughs> i mean we found stuff. i was gonna I say we filled the we Star filled Wars the and pokemon filled a lot i was gonna that's say fair. we filled we filled the two hours that's fair i always find a way I, we don't have just streamers on here so if you're 
even just like an interesting person you yeah. come on because I had my friend Jeff who's like a big old school gaming collector. Oh hell yeah, um, that's awesome. <laughs> graphic designer, so he had all that kind yeah. of stuff. So even if you're in that kind of thing, even Eric Arena, who's mostly a cosplaying person. That's true. If you, that's if you true. have something interesting, we'll bring you on and talk about it. Yep. Well hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate it guys. All oh, right. Of course. All right. So apparently tomorrow me and Mike are gonna be doing Stardew at some point. <laughs> <laughs> so we can do probably when they get up, maybe I don't know. So till then, stay happy, stay healthy. If you can legally do so, stay high. Hell yeah! And remember, it is okay to not be okay. That's right. All right. Agreed. Definitely agreed. Keep up with your friends. You never know how they're feeling that day. Yep. And remember also, smile more. Because that smile could brighten somebody's day. It's oh my. Like me, that, was <laughs> that was fucking creepy. If only my camera froze. <laughs> that... <laughs> and then it did. <laughs> if only my and camera froze. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, well, till next time. <laughs> Bye. Have a good Bye. time. Bye. Bye.